Marco Petrozella, aka Lord Marco. Thanks for coming on, Marco, today. Oh yeah, man. Thanks for having me. No, um, you know, I was gonna say, your video is gone, bro. I don't know if that means anything. I don't. I don't mind though. Hopefully, hopefully you can see me still. Yeah, I can see you. It'll, it should all be good. <laughs> cool, cool. So you know, um, for those who don't know, you know, you're kind of one of like the most important people when it comes to the kind of you know. 320 BPM blasting that, that happened in the mid 2000s. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> I try to push. I try to push the limits of what you know people are you know capable of doing. So, <laughs> you know, would you mind giving us some background? Like, you know, what was it like? You know, for you from your perspective, metal drumming before things got that crazy, and then how it kind of transformed into what it is today. Yeah. I mean, so I uh, I basically randomly started playing the drums, um, literally randomly. Like I I wasn't really musical. I don't come from a musical family at all. No one in my family plays any instrument or anything. And you know, as a growing up as a kid, we just listened to the pop music and shit. You know, like like listening to whatever, like Michael Jackson and stuff like that. You know, like like literally. And then. Um, I, you know, I started, I started watching, I mean, like I saw like MTV and stuff in the nineties, in the middle, you know, mid nineties. And I was getting into punk music then. And I, I really got in a lot of punk music just cause I liked how fast, uh, it was and aggressive it sounded. And that's like when I started playing drums. Um, and, but when I started playing, you know, I was, I was like just a kid, I was like nine years old. And, um, around that time I mostly, I, I took drum lessons, but I was, you know, taught to play jazz music and, and funk and stuff like that no, no, nothing no punk or no metal that's for sure and um you know a few years go by and i'm in you know middle school and i'm discovering death metal and uh i just remember the first time when i heard a blast beat um it was pretty life-changing you know because i always wanted i was always looking to find the fastest punk band you know and i didn't even know death metal existed so when i when i randomly when i like just stumbled upon metal music and I heard double bass and then a blast beat. I was like, holy shit. And I mean, looking back, it was probably, you know, not even, it's not even like that fast, you know, but when you're like 12 years old and you hear double bass, uh, it, it blows your mind, you know? So I started getting really into metal music then, you know, young, like I wasn't even a teenager yet. And I started playing, you know, death metal. This is like the late nineties. So 1998, 99, I was listening to like Nile and dying fetus and then i got into like doom Borgir, you know and shit like that and uh pretty much and at around 2000 so i'm a teenager now in 2000 and that's when i heard doom Borgir, uh that puritanical album and that, that album i think completely changed the whole metal drumming game because um you know it was like really well produced album and all the drums sounded fucking sick nick parker plays really well on it and that was like the first time drums were like quantized, I think, and stuff like that, like really edited. Um, but even back then, I didn't even know what that was, you know. So I, I'm just going home every day after school, practicing to that, trying to match exactly like how Nick plays. And, and then even like with Dying Fetus, uh, trying to play what Kevin Talley is playing, like just matching it. And then, you know, I stumbled upon uh, Origin. I heard John Longstreth and and basically it was like in 2000 when I heard this and I heard the gravity blast and I was like, dude, what the fuck is that? You know, I tried to figure it out. I didn't know what he's doing. I'm like hitting everything, trying to figure it out. Um, I basically figured it out <laughs> and I'm like 15 years old, you know, doing gravity blasts. And this is like, you know, it's basically in the year 2000, 2001. So I'm already like, like basically that's when I really started to, um, I don't know, I guess get build, build faster speed and stamina. Uh, it really wasn't until recently though, I think when I really became <laughs> like a lot stronger at playing blast beats and for a really extended period of time. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know, basically for me, it was like in the early 2000s when I really uh, took off drumming and just wanted to push the limits. So Basically, it's like I was I've always been on a quest to try to find the fastest drummer. And like I've always tried to find the strongest sounding drum production and stuff like that. So basically, when I couldn't really find anybody else, it's like I'm playing the drums that I want to hear. Like if I was, you know, like if I was a 12 year old kid looking to find the fastest shit, I would have loved to like found something like Brandrill or something, you know, 
it's like I'm basically just basically all the drums and music I play is just what I want to hear and what I'm like looking for in a band. <laughs> so it, it's it's like I don't know, like, like I don't care. I, I'm not really like it's like I don't really care what it is as long as it's fast. So, <laughs> yeah. And I think I think um, I don't know, man, I, I feel like I feel like uh, things are getting crazier in some aspects, but um I don't know. I don't I I don't really think there's like a whole lot of bands that are like ridiculously fast or extreme uh at the moment. Hopefully I I do think a lot of these younger drummers though right now who are big fans of mine and stuff and like people who like Spencer, you know, from Arch Spire and stuff, I think, you know, they're they're doing great things by influencing a bunch of the younger kids. I just I just hope there's some sort of way that we can take it even further on a on a like, you know, drumming technical level. Um a lot of things I've been doing in the last, I don't know, five years is basically like a double gravity blast where I'm doing the gravity blast on the snare drum and the gravity blast on like the ride cymbal. So it's just like this insane wall of blast beats. Uh, I haven't heard anybody else do this. So <laughs> that's like, that's why I'm just like, I don't know. I'm at least, I'm like trying to like think of other ways, you know, to make it really extreme and just kind of ridiculous, uh, like, you know, over the top really because <laughs> i mean it's extreme music it's extreme metal and it's like i just i don't know I'm, I'm not about i'm not about just playing simple stuff i'd rather i'd rather really see try to push the limits you know so i just hope i mean yeah it's like i i, I just hope there's our i just hope there's other people like me out there who are really uh interested in in doing this as well <laughs> yeah yeah you know, there were technical drummers in the 90s, but, you know, the production wasn't quite, uh, you know, like you said, quantized yet. No sample no. replacement, sometimes lost in the mix, no metronome. It can sound a bit sloppy at times. You know, right. wh what pushed you, you know, well, it's mainly, you know, your generation of musicians that had like, no, nah, everything's got to be on the grid perfectly this time. Yeah. I mean, so so actually what is interesting about that is... Um, even Brain Drill, the, the album, you know, the Parasites EP and uh, Apocalyptic Feasting, we didn't we didn't use a metronome and we didn't. There's, it's not quantized at all, actually. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, I know. Like Dylan was really I, I mean, Dylan always wrote about it during that time. I, I still didn't even really know what that was. I mean, honestly, like because like how we recorded the album was I would just play this like I would play the song with Dylan on guitar and that was like I re we recorded it and that was it and then we just gave that to Zach Elrin to mix it and <laughs> then Jeff would go in and add the bass you know and then Steve would go and do the vocals but it was like me and Dylan would just play it live and record it <laughs> and that was like the take so yeah I, like literally it was just like I still didn't even really know what that was um you know, I, 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 even to this day, I personally don't, I don't even know how to do any of that stuff on my computer because I record a lot of drums at home, but uh, I'm definitely not like a sound engineer. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing, honestly, when I record stuff. So it's like, I just try to capture the best take for the people and then I can, I give it to someone else and I'm like, you know, what, like, whatever, dude, like, whatever you're going to do, <laughs> as long as it sounds good, I'm fine with that, you know. But I mean, but, but yeah, no, I do agree that uh, the whole quantizing thing, I feel like it definitely got kind of out of control and it's and it it really is in that whole like i don't know like lorna shore style bands and stuff like that where it's just like it's so apparent that i mean it's like i'm even like the drums are probably just midi like come on <laughs> it's like it's like like even though i don't doubt these people can play it i i believe everyone can play all their parts but i'm just like you know on recording it's like you want it to sound the best so I, de I definitely understand where, where some bands are coming from with that, where they're like, you know, they want it to sound really strong, you know, and like sound good. Um, so it's going to basically just be pretty much like, you know, like a computer written on a computer, you know. So it's like, I don't know. I definitely understand where bands like that come from. But as at the same time, yeah, it's just like I, it, it's so much better to hear it and see it play live. And then, yeah, I mean, like I said, with the brain drill and then even with some of my earlier bands, it was like that stuff was all just like no metronome <laughs> we just played it you know live and just recorded it and that was it so and i think i know and i think i think some people thought maybe it was like quantized and stuff brain roll stuff but it's definitely not so oh my god that's, <laughs> that's insanity but, but yeah, yeah you know one thing we saw like maybe like 2010s early 2010s when it got really annoying is 
um, yeah. replacing all the kick drums with this clicking sound. You know, it got to the point where I remember seeing, you know, bands like Destruction and fucking Creator, you know, not like fast drums, but you just hear a loud click coming out of the speaker and they've got the fucking <laughs> laptop, you know, set on like a, a spare snare in the corner. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that is kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of tricky. I guess really, what, what was it? I'm not sure what them, but it's just like, I guess everyone was using some really crappy sample for the bass drums and stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know, though. That is kind of that is kind of funny. I feel like that might be different from the American like shows and festivals compared to maybe European fests. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, here here in the US, all the bands, like whenever I see a band, everyone's pretty much using like the same bass drum trigger sound and it's not too bad but the see the problem the problem with triggers in general is um unless you really have it dialed in it could actually make you sound way worse <laughs> like you know because you get like misfire like you, you'll hit the bass drum one time but it could be set off twice or something like that and so it's just like that's why that's why it's like important to get a really good sound engineer you know like a sound person for your band to play live because it's just like Dude, you could be having all kinds of errors and it basically could just make you sound way worse. And that kind of goes back to where it's like on the studio stuff. It's like you want everything to be like perfect sounding. So at that point, most of these bands are just like, fuck it, we'll just program the drums, you know, and stuff like that. Because it's like we just wanted to sound good. <laughs> and then, yeah, like, you're saying, like live, then live, it's like you hear all the weird samples and the weird clicks and stuff. <laughs> I was gonna say I know I know way back in the '90s, whatever uh, the Pantera dude, uh, Vinny would like put a tape a quarter to the bass drum to get that action. Before it was like I guess it was like instead of using triggers, he would do that. So when he hit the bass drum, it would like hit the quarter on the on the bass drum, and it just made a clicky sound. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. that's like prehistoric uh, triggers, I guess. <laughs> I mean, do do you feel that kind of like? You know the triggers and all that like that's essential now for the way you know extreme metal has gone or do you think we could ever go back to a more you know acoustic sound yeah that's tough so like at home in my studio i i literally actually don't use triggers at all it's all microphones but see literally you base it i'm like this is where it gets this is where it gets like interesting because it's like uh, with a good sound engineer, it's like you literally can change any microphone. You can basically turn it into a trigger, you know, um, uh, by just like using these like gates. You gate the microphone and stuff, so it just picks up each hit perfectly, and it's still just a microphone. So it's like even even without, I mean, like even with or without triggers, it's like you can literally do the same thing with microphones. But I guess with microphones, it's a little bit harder because you know the microphone will pick up all the noise as well, not just like not just the snare drum, not just the bass drum but like everything around you and stuff too. But um, yeah, I mean, that's why like, like at home, I literally don't use triggers cause it's like, it, I, like what I was saying, I find it super annoying unless you really have it like dialed in with the module and stuff. It'll just like, it'll just sound like fucked up. And uh, you know, when you're playing live and the bass drum triggers fucking up or something, misfiring and stuff. I mean, it's like, sometimes you don't really have time to fix that. So then it's like you got to rely on the microphone, like like usually like in a show, yeah, they'll put a microphone in the bass drum and use the trigger, and if the trigger's like fucking up, then it's like you just got to rely on the microphone. So I think in general it's just important to still be able to play everything without you know without needing triggers really. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you kind of if you use triggers, it's like you want to use it to your you know basically to help you to just make you like yeah your bass drum will sound stronger and everything and sound more consistent. But you still want to be it's like you still need to be playing it correctly though you know so i don't know i i do i do think it would be really cool to see uh bands recording like more acoustic again um lately with everything i've done i've tried to i try to actually you know i've tried to kept it more acoustic than like some of our previous stuff like because even like the brando stuff was all recorded on the roll v drums which is electronic drums, but it was like all real playing still, you know, just no editing and stuff. But but it's like it was all like you know the sampled sounds, I guess, and stuff like that. And then even like on my drum set at home when I record and stuff, a lot of times like blend, you know, like a sampled tom and stuff, just because it's like I want it to actually sound good still. And, and since I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> like like a sound engineer stuff, it's like that's the best I can do is let's do that. 
but um i feel like i feel like yeah if, if if bands actually recorded with you know a really good who really knew what they're doing like a sound engineer they could probably pull it off you know what i mean and that would sound way better than than, than just using many drums bro <laughs> Because you know you hear bands like the Spies Daikon or Arch Spy, you know anything that kind of you know drifts between deathcore, death metal, whatever, and like it doesn't even sound like drumming to me. You know what I mean? To my brain, <laughs> it, it it's just like it's, yeah, it's, it's the fucking Guitar Pro Five drums. You know when you're putting them on Guitar Pro Five. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that is actually funny. You mentioned the Spies Daikon. Because um, I actually do, I really think Alex is probably one of the most extreme drummers, and and it's and it's true. It's kind of sad that maybe he doesn't get as much recognition, maybe, or that people kind of dismiss it because he's like, because it's like deathcore or or something. But I'm like, dude, some of the shit he's playing is seriously ridiculous. Actually, I was actually gonna do a drum cover of one of their songs like pretty soon because, I mean, literally his. To me, it's like his drumming, the way he blasts and stuff is like it's almost identical to what I would think and like how I play and how I think, you know, drums should sound too. So, but I know what you mean where I think it's really just like the samples they're using for, for the drums because it's like obviously that dude can definitely play it. But yeah, it's like every single drum is sound replaced and and it's just like, it's, I don't know, it's everything's at like the max velocity and shit. So it sounds like kind of goofy yeah but i mean i mean i still fucking love it but yeah it's kind of it is kind of rough i know what you mean it just it, you're just like it could definitely just be a computer or you know it's just programmed but it's like at least i know for him it's like i know he literally can play it but yeah <laughs> i definitely i definitely agree with you that like it's just like over the top though midi you know fake ass samples <laughs> whenever whenever it's like obnoxiously like that for me it's hard to really listen to a band when I know when I know it's just completely programmed because it's just like, like dude, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like dude. Even if the drums sounded bad, that would sound better than this, you know. <laughs> yeah. I you know ever since COVID, like the number of one man bands that have just popped out, and all these guys, man, with that fucking superior drummer, Russian <laughs> crack. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, that is kind of yeah, that is definitely true. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's. I mean, in a way, it's like really fucking cool now how easy it is to record. I mean, pretty much, like literally anybody can just like record stuff now, and it would sound, you know, as good as stuff from the '90s. It just doesn't sound as like raw though, and it doesn't sound as real. That's for sure. Everything's like electronic, you know, as fuck. But yeah, I mean, it, it's true. Where it's just like, it's almost like now in general though, the scene too in general, just bands. It's like there's so many fucking bands, dude. It's definitely wild <laughs> wild <laughs> literally yeah. No. so yeah i mean you know let's let's go a bit um you know over some of the main bands that you worked with you know i think one that is particularly interesting is that you're a live drummer for vital remains you know who had like 700 drummers in their life <laughs> <laughs> dude i know i know actually it's really funny to look at their like history thing like to look at it now and it's just like this giant fucking wall of, of text. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I joined, I mean, I played live for Vinyl Remains, you know, when I was 19 years old. <laughs> and Tony, like basically Tony and Dave saw a video of me from 2005. Uh, I mean, recording, playing the drums, you know, wearing a Vinyl Remains t-shirt and everything. And Tony asked me, you know, he wrote me an email and stuff. And I was just like, what the fuck? No way this is Tony. And then, <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, basically, yeah, it's like I, I got to the point where I flew out to jam with them and, and, you know, I jammed with them and everything and got the gig and stuff. And, you know, it was totally insane because I literally saw Vital Remains, you know, two years prior to that when I was 17 and, you know, in high school and I was just like a kid. I was like, this band kicks ass. And then now here I am like jamming with them. <laughs> And it was just so it was so crazy because you know Dave Suzuki too is like an incredible drummer and guitar player. That dude can just like play anything. And so I basically learned all the songs by watching Dave play the whole set with Tony. And I recorded it and then I studied it every day. You know, we, we just we practiced every day. Um, basically, like I I lived at at Dave's house for like a month before the tour started and we've just practiced every single day for like hours. I mean, I, I want to say it was like four hours or something 
every single day for like 30 days. And then, and then we went on tour and the tour was three months long all over Europe. And, um, I know it, it was literally, it was like 54 shows or something total. And it was just like crazy, man. It was fucking crazy. And I would say during that time, that's when I really became like definitely a stronger at blast beats. <laughs> Cause even before then I was like, you know, I was like getting there. I was like playing pretty crazy stuff, but I think the stamina wasn't even, I wasn't really even there yet with the stamina really, but like playing vital remains every single day, you know, for literally, I mean, basically it was like four months, you know, like every day, uh, that definitely helped me out. I, I, I became stronger, you know, doing that. And, um, it was kind of funny cause like I left for that tour. And then when I came back, the guitar player in my band at home, you know, Greg from Bornegar, he was like, <laughs> He was just like, dude, you came back a man, you know, like, cause I was just like, I was like hella like skinnier and like more toned, you know, I was like buff and stuff. So it was, it was pretty funny, but, um, yeah, actually what's kind of funny though is yeah. Even when I joined Vinyl Remains in 2005, already then they, they even already then, yeah. If you looked at the, at the Wikipedia or whatever, then they fucking already had like at least 10 other drummers before me. <laughs> So it was like, that was 2005. So you go there now is just like, holy shit. I think there's like 30, they've had literally had like 30 different drummers or something. And it's just, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of fun and it was a good experience doing that for sure. And um, it was awesome to like, you know, basically all I wanted to do was try to tour and play shows. And then, you know, there I was touring with this, this band that I liked <laughs> as, as a teenager. <laughs> and it was like, so fucking awesome. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I was going to actually play some more shows with them, but I lived in California and then they, they lived in Rhode Island, which is very far. It's like, you know, over 3000 miles. I don't know what that is in kilometers, but it's super far. <laughs> and so it was just like, it just wasn't going to work. You know, it, it just wasn't going to work at the time because this was this was like, you know, 2005. I wasn't fully like now I'm in bands, you know, where we all live in different states and countries but like back in 2005 when you're 19 you can't really like it's like hard to like process like you're like how the fuck is this gonna work you know so basically it's like after i did that tour which was awesome i just i was just like dude i don't know what, like i was like i don't know what, how i'm gonna do this so i basically just basically was just like yeah i'm not gonna do the next thing you know because i think they wanted to play like a show in rhode island or something and i was just like bro i just can't do it so that's when you know that's when the next dude came in and and yeah they've had like literally 30 other people <laughs> ever since yeah. dude you know they even had this guy at one point if i'm not mistaken i remember seeing a video the kick and the symbols no the kick and the symbol were actually reversed you know with them like when they came out so he was actually playing the kick drums with his uh, right hand <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I have to, what? When was this? Dude, that I, can't, I can't remember, but it's just like this guy. He couldn't actually do the fucking, you know, the blasts with his feet, right? He can do the, like the swiveling thing or the thing where you hit it with the heel. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I think I've ever heard, bro. I'm not kidding. Dude, I used what? to find the videos, but the guy's like, dick, 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 you know, with his right <laughs> hand just doing the double bass. Oh, shit. Bro, that is honestly that's rough. Um, damn, that's rough. And that's funny because I mean that's not even like the fucking the old Brodequin drummer John Engman. He uh, he literally I don't know he had like really bad surgery on his hands, so he like can't play the drums. So I remember seeing them, and he's just like hitting a keyboard. He's playing the the drums on the keyboard on stage, but I, like that you're like oh, okay, like that dude is actually the drummer, but he like can't. I don't know. He has like some crazy problems. But dude, that is crazy, bro. I'm gonna have to find that too. That's actually kind of funny, man. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's he's triggering there, yeah, like he's hitting like the yeah whatever, like a little pad, and it's the bass drum. Oh my god, dude, that's so crazy. That's funny as hell. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I don't know. I don't even. I didn't even know that happened because that that's I'm so, that should have went viral, man. <laughs> Um, yeah. So anyway, I, I want to go to two bands. You know, one we spoke about quite a, a bit, but and the other, um, and the other one, the Faceless, who you played live with for a year, and Braindrop. Because I remember at that time, you know, this is when 
just before the kind of thrash revival stuff, this is when, you know, that kind of technical metal was really everywhere. I remember on MySpace, you know, you'd go into the band's like page, like not, not even the bands, like just random people's pages and you'd get that music. Oh, yeah. this is the future of metal. You know, our music is better than yours because we're this complicated and that, that, that. Like, do you think <laughs> like that stuff you were doing back then really helped get metal into the kind of public eye because of how com complex and crazy it was? Oh, man. That's interesting. I never, I, I have actually never thought of thought of that because, um, you know, like as I'm saying from the beginning, it's like I'm just I'm just playing the drums and the music that uh, that I want to hear personally. <laughs> so it's like I'm just it's kind of it's kind of like you know like when you're like I know like when I was in the faceless and stuff, it's like we're just playing the songs you know that that they wrote and. Um, we, I, I know. I mean, I can. I can honestly say it's not like it's not like they're thinking like, "Oh, dude, let's write this so we can become this." You know, what I mean, it's like we're just writing what we like to play, and um, yeah, no, that is interesting. But I mean, it is interesting to think how. Yeah, I mean, I guess even. I, I mean, I guess yeah, it's true. Like with Brain Drill influenced, you know, like the next wave of of crazy bands. Um, I mean, I know for for a fact I influenced uh, the Spencer from Archspire like he's written to me in private, you know, <laughs> thanking me and stuff. And it's just like, it's, it's super interesting. Yeah. To, to think about how, how like you influence these, up these, you know, these people that are like pretty big now. And it's just like, what the fuck? Cause, cause um, yeah, I mean, back then it's like, we're just playing shows. We're pretty much, it was like pretty much all just, we're just having fun, man, playing what we want to play. Um, I would say, I would say, I don't think anybody in the band is, is writing it to, to try to, outdo another band like kind of like what you were asking it's like it's like like i'm saying like we literally just playing whatever the fuck we want and and you know it just so happens to be fucking crazy i guess you know but uh yeah i mean that's what i mean it's like it's like i don't think anybody's really like thinking like all right let's write this most insane album ever because even literally even an anomalous uh which i personally think is like the most technical band out there and that album came out like like 10 years ago too and it's just like it's like even when we did that i know they weren't they weren't like we're gonna write the most ridiculous thing ever it was just like check out this riff <laughs> check out this riff and then check out this riff bro check out this breakdown you know what i mean like like I, th I think it's like i guess we're all just a little bit like fucking crazy and and uh <laughs> that's just what goes on in our in our heads you know we just we just want to play extreme music <laughs> and 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 if we influence a lot of people that's awesome but it's like i definitely don't think that was like the goal or or even the you know we didn't even, we couldn't even, we didn't even think about that you know what i mean <laughs> it's like we didn't, we didn't even think about where where it would you know go from there you know what i mean so yeah <laughs> yeah i know because you know when brain drill came out like the the ep i remember it because i had the metal hammer magazine and there was a little blurb Back in the day, like metal, because I lived in the UK, Metal Hammer in the UK, and I remember just like listening to that, listening to that EP, and just telling everyone back then, "Look how smart I am! I listen to this, you listen to pop." <laughs> <laughs> so fucking cringe now when I think of it. Yeah, I mean that's actually pretty funny, bro. Honestly, that's actually really funny to be honest. But um, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I was like, I can honestly say that's definitely not how we were. We were just like smoking weed all the time, and we are just like. We're just like, bro, this is fucking tight. Like, we're like, check this out. This is so fast. And that was like it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that was a big thing back back in the day. Like, you know, for my generation of guys, right? I was like, yes, we listen to this because it's technical. Because we want real musicianship. <laughs> <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. Honestly, that's, that's interesting. And I almost wonder if that was the... I, I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe that happened in America here. I honestly, I, I don't know. I I really can't think of like people who were saying they wanted to listen to you know musicianship here. I I think we're probably listening to like Dream Theater, which is stuff that I don't listen to at all. Because <laughs> I'm like, there's no blast beats. Why the fuck am I gonna listen to this? And the dude's singing like, no man, I'm not listening to that. So. I guess that maybe that's like a difference, you know, in the in the sides or whatever in the, in the countries. But yeah, I'm I'm like I'm like everybody here is just like you know brain roll. They're like that's fucking brutal, you know. Like we just want to be brutal, and then and that's like it, <laughs> you know. 
<laughs> I mean, devourment were brutal, and it was literally like you know, jug, 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 yeah. jug for like an entire album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Neanderthal stuff is really cool. The I'm I'm definitely into into the Neanderthal riffs and slam stuff. Um, that's like even like the new uh, well, the Six Feet Under stuff is like that too, where it's like so simple. I guess there's a certain like I don't know. <laughs> It's like a whole different type of thinking, though. It literally, like to me, it's literally a whole different type of thinking, because I'm I'm just so used to thinking in you know microseconds, where I'm like thinking of like what can I do in you know this one second <laughs> of a riff, what can I do, and then and then whereas like that stuff, it's like more laid back, I guess. But it's like it's literally it like like with the Neanderthal shit, it's like it's like all right, what 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 I'm not gonna do, <laughs> you know? It's like I'm just going to hit the high at one time, you know, or something. And it's like, oh, my God. But but sometimes, like, being that simple is actually kind of nice to hear, too. The, the, the you know, the, the, the opposites of it. But yeah, because you played in the last two Six Feet Under, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so, look, I'm really sorry. No offense to anyone who likes that band or, <laughs> <laughs> or their music or whatever, dude. It's just not for me. I, yeah. I don't mean to be rude. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, to me, it's like that stuff. I, I mean, for me, it's like just so awesome, really, be playing in a band with Chris and Jack Owen, and then I'm, and then Jeff is in the band, and me and Jeff were in Brain Drill, you know. So it's like, it's like, I don't know. There's a lot of history in that one band, actually, which is like kind of insane. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's just it's death metal and it's like it's not fast like that fast really or technical at all but it's like it's still just like fucking death metal and that's what i like so <laughs> that, like, you know because when i hear six feet under it to me it always sounds like we're gonna take some you know hard rock and rock and roll tune it low and uh da -da. yeah i mean that is kind of i mean that is kind of true actually yeah the death death and roll bro um i mean that is yeah that is true because that's almost like and um that's almost like that band so i, I used to i mean i do I've, I've listened to like so many bands bro uh but, that, but like death and roll stuff that's like that band blood duster from australia they started to get like that in the end in their end of times you know like because i remember in the beginning they were a fucking badass grindcore band like gore grind stuff and then like the last couple albums they were literally it was just like acdc with death metal vocals and and that came out like you know in the 2000 like early 2000s or 1999 or some shit and it's just like i don't know it's just because it's interesting now that six feet under is is, is kind of like doing in a way that same similar style where it's just yeah it's like the death and death and roll bro <laughs> you... i mean it's just it's just good music to headbang to and to get people to mosh and 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 you know hang out and drink beer because um so so even what i was going to say is it's like the thing about like super extreme metal bands is if you watch a live like watch them live it's it's like hard you know it's like it's like hard because everyone usually just is standing there or something and just like chilling they, it's like you, you go watch necrophages to like watch them play and and you're not really like moshing or, or like doing karate or something you're not like beating each other up but like when you see six feet under People are like moshing and like running around and stuff, and it's like a whole different type of energy, you know. So that's why that's kind of like why I like doing the both <laughs> extreme, like ridiculous stuff, and then just the more, uh, you know, rock and roll stuff. Because the because because with the death and roll stuff, people are moshing, you know, and the shows are a lot crazier. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, there were articles, uh, you know, for your drop. I mean, on the album, it was like, uh, Lord Marco records, uh, you know, nightmares of the decomposed in one take. And I'm like, what a fucking surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I know, I know. What yeah. but, you know, what's interesting is like, to, obviously, you know, your style what, for what you're known for, for, you know, for what you've been, you know, trying to do ever since you were young, could not work in this style of music. Like, yeah. Are you thinking in terms of like, hey, this is what other guys did, or how do I slow down Lord Marco for this release? Yeah, right, 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 and exactly, and that's kind of like, um, that's why, that's why, like, at the moment I'm listening to uh, that's the Slamish band, you know, Visceral Discord, mm -hmm. and 
and that to me that that out the drumming on that album is like so fascinating to me because like when i hear the guitar riffs i like if, if they if like if the dudes were like hey rec- you know we want you to record the album and then and they sent me those riffs it's like i know for a fact what what that you know what the guy what the other guy did i definitely would not have done at all like i would have made a way more technical sounding you know a lot more blast beats and stuff mm. so that's why that's why like with six feet under i try to think like that i try to think um, a little bit different more in a way i guess it's like more commercial like like i'm trying to think uh yeah exactly like what what not to do like we're we're you know instead of like changing every three seconds doing a drum fill and and, and blast beats it's like it's like all right i'm gonna play this one beat for like a minute <laughs> you know? so 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 it is true it's like it's like i it basically definitely requires a different way of thinking um especially for me <laughs> but it's still a lot of fun and honestly i feel i feel like just even doing that i've actually become better now um you know because now it's like i'm thinking i'm thinking you know a little bit differently instead of just in terms of speed you know <laughs> i'm like now i can actually think of more groove and and you know like like you know like i'm gonna do one drum fill so it's like i better make it you know a really powerful sounding one you know what i mean instead of just like spastic stuff <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. so you know now the hard question obviously you yeah. know to get to your level of playing there's a lot of you know the dirty word practice so tell us like <laughs> how are you practicing how are you training how, what, what what did you have to do to get to that level or did it happen overnight oh man so uh, i can definitely say it did not happen overnight uh at all because <laughs> yeah i started drumming when i was nine and um i you know by the time i was 12 i could play like every you know no effects and mxpx and pennywise like a bunch of like punk songs like and i could i could play them like just like the, the dudes there and stuff and then um yeah when i started getting into like metal and double bass i was playing emperor and Dubourgier, and dying fetus and nile and origin and stuff when I, when I was like 16 you know i'm like trying to play these songs and um i mean yeah it's like it was rough it was definitely rough um <laughs> mostly i guess just the double bass parts were pretty rough uh <laughs> so um it wasn't until i was like 17 years old you know in high school um i would actually practice you know in like the mar i was like in the marching band and drum line and stuff like that you know like concert band and stuff um and so we would practice after school every day for like i don't know like literally it was like three hours four hours five hours every day and honestly i think that helped me out a lot just just to get my chops up you know and better and then um yeah like i said though the vital remains thing was really like what kind of tri- like kicked it off and sparked uh sparked it where i was just like all right playing playing like literally blast beats every single day for like an hour for literally four months straight and that will definitely you know that will definitely get you good um and then, you know, basically in my 20s with brain drill and stuff, I almost feel like I actually got kind of, I kind of like digressed. I feel like I actually got kind of like slower and worse at the drums at like right after the brain drill face this uh-huh. time. Um, Cause you know, I started having kids and stuff then. And you know, now I'm like working and I'm taking care of kids. And, and like, I'm, I was only drumming like 10 minutes a day basically, or if that, you know, like I, I drum like once a month or something and then it wasn't really until like 2012 and then 2013 when I joined Six Feet Under, where I started to drum finally again, like a little bit more. <laughs> you know, I still, I still, even right, even to this day, like right now, I really don't even drum that often, man. I, I drum like once a week. Usually, usually the only time I'm drumming is when I'm recording, and I don't really need to like warm up or anything. And it's like I'm not, I'm not like practicing. You know what I mean? It's like I literally will just go to go sit down and I'll record the song. And then that's it. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not like, sit, I'm not like playing the drums every day, you know, for hours like anymore. Like, like, like what I'm saying is, it's like the only time I really practiced was when I was younger, you know, basically from when I was nine to like 17, you know, I would actually, I would literally be like practicing then. And so that's why it's like after that point, it was more or less just like conditioning, like keeping up with it, you know, and then. Um, but it really wasn't until you know literally i don't know in the last five years i think when i actually actually became faster and i 
for me, I feel like that's only just because of like my age, you know, and then my, my amount of time I've been playing the drums. So like, yeah, I mean, basically I think it's good to practice if you can. I mean, if I could, I totally would love playing drums every single day nonstop, but um, I, that's just not like who I am at all. <laughs> I, I, I work and I have, fam I have a family and stuff. So it's like, I'm not even playing music all the time, really. So um, yeah, that's why, that's why like, if I, you know, if someone is watching this or whatever, someone who's younger, uh, definitely practice while you still can, because, you know, when, when you get older and such, and you gotta, you gotta take care of other people and pay bills, you might not be able to, to play as much. So, so yeah, that's why, that's why um, it's like, currently I really don't even practice at all. <laughs> To be honest, I should though. <laughs> you do. I'm like, I definitely should start getting back into it, but no. Nah. <laughs> I just, I just basically just do a little bit every day, you know, like, like literally like ten minutes or something, and that's about it. You know, it reminds me of that release you did because I remember hearing it like a while ago. Was it abolishing the dawn of reverence? No, admonishing the dawn of reverence. Uh, chasm of discord. Yeah, yeah, like, dude. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. insane as well. I was like, whoa. Actually, yeah. So, so that that I I and I'm actually gonna agree agree with you with this. So the that fucking the guitar player name is Matt Matt Miller, and he's he's gonna like you know hire me again to record another album, but under his own. It's literally like his solo project is called Matt Miller, and that guy Matt is such a great songwriter. Like, like I know I, like it's crazy. I mean that dude hit me up you know random like all these people always just write to me randomly, but like he wrote to me randomly. And sent me some songs and i was like oh hell yeah i'll record for you and then um and then you know as i'm doing it i was just like bro these songs are like really well written because because that stuff isn't i mean in my opinion that stuff isn't like over the top you know it's not like no it's not like just ridiculously fast all the time you know what i mean it's like it's like more it's almost like the classic 2000 just death metal, you know, where people actually wrote songs still. <laughs> people are actually like writing actual music with the melodies and, you know, guitar solos and and the drums are like really thought out, you know. So yeah, no, I agree with you. That's cool that you checked that one out. Cause yeah, I agree. I feel like I feel like that album, it's like in theory, if if that came out, you know, like in two thousand, that shit would be huge. <laughs> you know, and it's just like it's just like it kind of sucks that there are a lot of great musicians who who flying under the right radar because it's like you know i don't know what like there's just so many goddamn bands now it's hard to really get seen unless you're doing something really ridiculous i guess <laughs> yeah. now i wanted to talk to you about the big one not sure if you're allowed to talk to, about this this band in particular because it doesn't actually appear on like metal archives or anything but could we talk about necrophagist if that's possible oh Bro, I wasn't uh, I wasn't in that band. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I wasn't in that band. So when I was in the face, you're talking about Necrophagist, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I played when I played with uh, the Faceless on tour, we um uh, during the first summer slaughter, um, a fucking Necrophagist was on tour, and he had a drummer. His drummer, his drummer name was Marco as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't me bro that's why i guess i know and i think i remember even back then people were like what or marco's gonna be a microphone and, and and then we're just like we're just like bro no it's a different marco it was this guy named marco miniman or something oh, yeah He's yeah of course dude he he auditioned for um, dream theater yeah 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 see bro you yeah, literally trolled us <laughs> i'll hold that against <laughs> you now you literally made me believe that you were part of that band <laughs> Bro, I'm fucking dead right now. <laughs> nah, but we, but I'll just start saying I was in that band, bro. I, I mean, I mean, technically, that's right. Technically, me and Mohammed, we had we had lunch together one time, and that was nice. He's a nice guy. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was like it was literally just me and him. Cause yeah, I forget why we were in Summer Solder. He didn't want like the food backstage. It was like something weird. Maybe he was on a diet, some restriction thing. And and yeah, basically he was like, I'm gonna go to the you know, <laughs> then it was Subway. But he's like, I'm gonna go to the Subway, and and I went with him, and it was literally just me and him, and that was that was like really that was like pretty cool. Because <laughs> um, let me think. Even yeah, after after that we uh, I played some shows, 
like Brandrill played some shows with with Necrophagus and stuff too. So, yeah, <laughs> bro, you're you're gonna cry now. He's gonna cry, dude. He's no, gonna... no, not at all, dude. I was just surprised. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, because you, you know everyone's, you know everyone keeps memeing about it. You know the third album, right? I was like, dude, maybe he has info. Bro, that's right. Oh my god, that's right. Actually, yeah, you're right. I don't even remember what I said, but but I know, I know. That's right. That's right. The third album. Now let me think. I know. I want to say the fucking that one. I forget which drummer. I think it was Roman. You know, Romain, the the French drummer. Hmm who actually recorded that album on drums because i'm dude i mean i am pretty certain they have it finished but for whatever weird reason it's just not out and i have no idea why <laughs> oh my God. it's very strange i know i don't know i don't know what they're doing man that's so weird yeah one day maybe one day i don't know i mean i guess there must be something weird within the band that's my opinion because that kind of that tends to happen you know it's like, hey, if you release it, let's all split the royalties or 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 Muhammad. I don't know who, you know, I'm just guessing one of them's probably like, well, no, I'll just keep all the money, you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess for sure. Because <laughs> uh, I know he works for Volkswagen, you know, maybe Volkswagen like got got into it and told him, Don't release it. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be funny. That's so crazy that he does, by the way. <laughs> That's so <laughs> Dude, Jesus Christ. It's so strange. <laughs> His entire life story to me is one of the funniest things in metal, dude. It's like so out of the ordinary. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is that is true. I mean, right? He blew he kind of just blew up out of nowhere, it seems like. I mean, it's impressive that they basically really only have like one album. I mean, you know, they're the, the first one, but it's like I feel like no one really knows, like no not that many everyone knows Epitaph, you know. So it's like it's pretty it's pretty impressive to have like basically one album in my opinion <laughs> and to be so, so influential <laughs> exactly all right so you know let's round this up um sure. you, do you still listen to metal currently because you know god knows how many bands you are at the, at the, <laughs> right now i mean yeah no i do i definitely do what yeah, are some yeah. bands that you're into what are some bands you think are doing the right things like any recommendations to give to us Damn, that's tough because I honestly, I, I know I'm trying to think. I mean, so a lot of times, I mean, I'll be honest, I listen to a lot of stuff that I will be working on, of course. I mean, of course, just to get familiar with it. But also at the moment, like I said, I've been listening to Visceral Disgorge a lot, but that album came out, I think, literally like 10 years ago. <laughs> and then uh, I'm listening to, like, I actually do listen to a lot of Despised Icon, but I'm not sure, you know, I, I don't. I don't even know like i feel like they just have they have a lot of albums which is awesome but yeah i just kind of flip through their you know all their albums at any time and um i mean i feel like those guys are fucking killing it so i don't know i'm telling you i feel like that dude alex the drummer alex i think is essentially doing all the same stuff that i do so that's why i really like them i mean it's like it's so extreme um but yeah i mean pretty much that i'm like despised icon and waking the cadaver Bro, if we went on tour, if that was a tour, I think that'd be fucking huge. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, kids, kids would get, kids would be dying, you know, doing karate and shit. So I think that would be great, honestly. But um, yeah. Um, I mean, really, aside from that, I listen to. It's like, it's like tough. It is kind of hard to 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 get into new metal, like all the newer bands. Um, like I listened to that new Zenith Passage album. I thought it was like pretty good. For the most part, what I thought was interesting about that is, I mean, I'm laughing. It's it's to me in me in my opinion, it's basically just the Faithless 2.0, you know, because mm -hmm. it literally has the singer Derek and then Brandon, the bass player, and and it's like it's just like it's like bro, this is basically just the Faithless. Like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so so like I like stuff like that, you know, where it's like um, I pretty much listen to all the homies bands still, you know, everyone who's a homie. Um, <laughs> I know I'm trying to think of uh, a newer band that I listen to. I I don't know, man. That's tough. <laughs> I feel like it's like I pretty much like when I listen to metal, it's like I'll listen to stuff, yeah, from the early 2000s, Orgasm, some Disavowed, you know, stuff like that. All the the first, the very first Origin album, you know, <laughs> mm. stuff like that. Um, I listen to a lot of like Emperor, you know. But uh, yeah, 
that's tough. Like, so like me personally, I, I like, like all these people talk about all these newer bands. I can't even like name any, but it's like, like Lorna Shore and stuff. Like I've never even heard a single one of their songs. I've only seen, I've saw, I've saw the drumming video that Austin guy put out, which is like fucking great. And, and, you know, stuff like that. But, um, and then I keep seeing Slaughter to Prevail, which is actually interesting. Cause uh, you know, they actually asked me to join their band, like to do a tour, I don't know, like 10 years ago. Oh my God. I don't even know who they One of the guys wrote to me asking if I could go on tour with them. But at that time, I was just like, dude, my life's too crazy right now. I can't. <laughs> and, and plus, and plus, I was like, I don't even really know you guys' music, you know? So I was like, dude, no, it's not, it's not for me. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, whenever I see stuff like these bands that people are talking about, it's it's like, I just can't. I don't know. I listen to it, and I'm like, I just can't really get into it. I don't know. I, th- I got, To me, I guess it is maybe part of the part of like the production. It's like just too... <laughs> It's just like too much. It's too it's too clean and it's like too fake, you know. I don't know. It's it's hard to it's hard to listen to it. Um yeah. What about you? What what any, any new bands you listen to, man? Oh quite a few, man. There's uh, like a long list. Uh oh, fuck. I'm like, oh fuck, never never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> it's constantly <laughs> rotating, you know. There, there's good yeah. there's good stuff, man, but you but you know what I mean? It, it's not like it was before. You know, I remember back then, like, the fucking, all those magazines, like, Kerrang, like, who do mainstream shit now. But even then, you, you know, I'd like, 2006, 2007, you'd open the fucking magazine to this, this little death metal page, and you'd get pure gold. Like, now, right. dude, you get, you have to go through band camp. You have to know a guy who knows a guy. And then all these gu- kids, like, dude, they have these lists, I shit you not, where it's, like, top 10 albums of June 23. Right. No, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. And I mean, I mean, that is that exactly. That's the thing. It's like, and 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 it's like a lot of them are actually probably pretty good too. But it's just like there's so many to choose from now, which is, I mean, it's great. It's like good and bad all at the same time. Yeah, it's it's just like it's like wait, it's just different now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know that's why I'm, that's why it's like that's why I'm basically always listening to kind of like the what I think is like the classics, you know, the the mm-hmm. early two thousand stuff. Cause it's like, it's like, no one really sounds like that anymore. Every, everyone, everyone sounds way more uh, computerized and everyone sounds the same. <laughs> and, and I don't like that. So <laughs> it's like, that's why it's gotta be something really different to catch my uh, attention. I was, uh, I mean, I actually, I really like, that's why I like, I like that band Guttalax a lot, even though they're like goofy as fuck. But uh, like, I love that band. Cause it's like, it's just so like stupid, you know. It's like good. <laughs> it's kind of, I guess, in a way, it's it's like six feet under, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just so like, you know, it's 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 death metal. It's like it's basic, but it's death metal. But it's like it's so good though, because it's like no one else really is doing that, you know. <laughs> it's like every, everyone's trying to be like ridiculous and and have you know synths and and clean singing and stuff. <laughs> so I'm just like, bro, I'm just gonna listen to this shit, this shit over here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean that's literally what their fucking lyrics are about, man. Just shit, literally. The shit <laughs> endables, shit happens. The butt man, you know. I mean I'm... diarrhea, you know. Poop <laughs> on. Yeah, I know. I, I love. I mean, I love that type of stuff. So that's why I was like, oh hell yeah. That's why I always thought that that band was good. I think I think some people think they're too they're too goofy, but uh, I'm in I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any final words? Damn, um, nothing really. Just uh, if you're playing music, if you're playing a band, don't stop. Obviously, if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, make mini music, that's totally fine. <laughs> like, like pretty much, like how what I what my 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 whole thing, like I've been saying, um, I'm playing the music and the drums that I want to hear, so you should do the same. It's like you know, don't let anybody like stop you from doing that. Just just definitely uh, keep at it. <laughs> Keep at it and don't quit your day job and, you know, don't quit Volkswagen. Okay. And, um, you know, blast beats, not people, bro. Okay. We all, we're all in this together. We got to have the, we got to have a big metal community again. Definitely things are getting weird sometimes, but, uh, we all got to remember that we're all into the extreme music, you know, for a reason because we're, because we're all different, you know, we're all the outcasts here. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much. Hey bro. Thanks for having me, man.